Hi, this is Petey from Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and today we're going to create the first Java extension for our card game. I'll be creating mine in Eclipse because it's going to be a Java extension, and I'll run through the process of doing that. First, you'll want to select New, Java Project. You'll want to name your project. We're just going to call ours uh, CCG. Uh, we, I always create mine in my workspace. Uh, if you have a special place you want to put yours, just select it and browse to it. I'll be doing mine in the workspace. Uh, I'll be using that. Everything's okay there. Click Next. Now, when you get to the Java settings, you'll want to go to the Libraries, then Add External Jars, and then you'll want to go to your server path for SmartFox Server. And inside there, go into the lib directory. And there's three files you're going to want to select here. You want the JSON. Let me expand this so you can see it a bit better. You want that lib, JSON, and the JYSFS. Open those up. It adds them for you. Just click Finish. And there we go. We got the project created. Now if you'll open that up, go into the source directory, create a new class. Uh, we're just going to call ours main lobby. Uh, you should create a package. Put it in a package. We're going to call our package uh, CCG. And let me see. Uh, I like to generate Java docs. Yeah, everything's okay there. Just hit finish. Now, if you look over here, it created our package for us and our first class. We're going to want to extend. abstract extension and if you notice you have this little red X here whoops I spelled extends wrong can't spell today extends then you click the little red X and you'll want to import the abstract extension and then, as you see, it gets added up here. Now, you have to implement three of the methods. There are five total, but you only need these three. There's going to be a couple of other ones I want to add for now. Uh, we're going to do uh, public void init. And we're also going to do public void destroy. Okay, so we got these five basic ones. I'm going to add some trace statements. What this does is it will output to the console when these particular functions are called. So we'll say extension initialized. Let's get cut and paste in. Extension destroy. Okay, now for the three that you implemented, you have two different handle requests. The one that we're going to be using for our, our project will be the one right here that handles the action script objects. We're going to change the parameters to something I just like a little bit better. Script object user user and this is from world. So how how this works is this is the command your client will send to the server. The action script objects, the data it sends with that command, this will take care of the user that sends it. And this will be from the room that the user sent it from. The handle of the request down here is for raw data. We won't be using that for our example. We're just strictly going to use this one here, which takes in the XML data. But we will be using this down here. I'm going to change the argument to internal event object. Then I'm going to add some traces in there as well. So 
for this trace. We're just going to get the command that was initiated. Like I said, we're not going to be using this one, but we are going to be using this. So here we're going to want to trace, actually even before we do that, we're going to want to know what event is called, and we'll want to get the name of that event. So we're going to have to create a string event name equals IEO dot get event name. Now this will, this will allow us to track what events are being fired. We'll want to know which ones, so we'll trace those. And we'll just say uh, event name. So there we go. Right now we have it set up so that we can track events as they happen. Let's save this off and then we'll add it to the server. Okay, here's the directory where I saved it. And if I open up the server, you'll notice there's a, a directory called Java Extensions. We can just go in there and go back to our workspace where we saved it. That's our project. We want to go into the binaries directory. This is our package, and if you expand that, you see our class in there. We want to take the whole package, bring it over, and just drop it in, just like that. So if you expand that, you should have your class. And we want to add this to our server as an extension. So we'll just simply go down the entire extension area. Let me just get this out because it's something else I was testing. And then inside the extension tags, we want to create a new extension. We're going to call ours lobby. We'll give it the class name. Now for the class name, you have to give it a fully qualified path. For us, that was ccg.mainlobby. You tell it its type, which is Java. So we'll save that. Then we'll start our server. So here we go. The server started up and we've got the first event. Uh, the server is ready. So now let's open up Firefox or whatever browser you're going to use. We'll go to our min tool. I find I usually have to click refresh because it's been sitting a long time. Uh, we'll type in our password. Now if we go to the zone browser, look for the zone that we just added that room to. Here it is. Now if you go to the extensions view, it's not there. So there must have been an error out in the extension. I'm not seeing it. That was my problem. I was on the room. We don't have it attached to the room. We have it attached to the actual zone itself. Now, I've made up a test client to show how some of the things work. Uh, this is where your console and your trace window will be. So let me just fire up my test client and I can show you what the output's going to look like down here. All right. Event fired, user joined. There's a command issued. So as you can see, there's an event fired, which comes from here, saying that a user joined. Now we can capture, we can have special code designated for when a user joins a room or joins a server by doing stuff such as if event name equals and then the name of the event you want such as user join then you just put your code in here And every time our user joins the server, or every time this event is fired anyway, all the code in here will be executed. 